you, Lord, as you love. Make it unconditional, honest, and kind. To ask nothing back in return, Lord, to encompass the whole of humankind. May I offer my love without speaking. May it radiate as it shines forth from me. May it be seen in my face and my eyes, Lord. May it be simple, sincere, and shame-free. Show me how to forgive, Lord, as you do. To not burden another with guilt. To not play the role of the martyr. To be the rock on which trust may be built. Make my love for others be greater by far than, they, than any love that is offered to me. Led by the Spirit, inspired by God, as forgiving as Jesus, end quote. And for the many intentions we hold in our hearts, we pray together, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end, amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. 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 So I know our community here can come and listen to this some of the little home and school updates that we have from the last time that we met with everyone. As you know, yes, everyone paid their fee at the beginning of the year, which covers a lot. We are really, really blessed to have so many active parents who help in a lot of the fundraising between the dining donates and all the little, especially through Scrip. We've made over $8,000 so far this year through Scrip alone. It has helped offsetting some of the costs that we normally have and allows us to do a little bit extra. So we've continued you know, with the usual supply closets, which teachers, um, Amy just came through and restocked everything. Again, today she brought in about 75 more boxes of tissues, more Clorox wipes. <laughs> they said you take whatever you need, and we're gonna touch base with Amy on Tuesday, and she's happy to run out. We'll just go through and stock it up again. So just take whatever you need, and we'll keep on going from there. Um, some of the other things that Home and School has covered, which you have all covered, is. Um, we've got the new Chromebooks have been up in the office, and while those were already paid for, the licensing fees are pretty high for the Google accounts. That has all been covered. We've paid for headphones for the Google Chromebooks. Um, we were going to initially pay for covers for everything, but a gracious parent has offered to pay for the covers that are, I believe, I don't, have they come in? They haven't come in yet. But, but, they, but the teachers are going to start using the Chromebooks. So we were waiting for the covers, but we can't wait anymore. <laughs> we just had Catholic Schools Week, so each teacher had just a little bit of something in a card as a thank you for everything that parents do nonstop. It's just a little token of thanks. And for the new staff, every other year we tend to do t-shirts, and for the new staff members who weren't here last year to get a t-shirt, we bought those for this year. Um, we've done a lot of other little things, other updates for that affect all of us. You may see on the new, on the webpage, there's the Amazon Smile account. For anybody who uses Amazon, in the upper left-hand corner, sometimes it'll say, hey, San Agnes School has an Amazon Smile account. All you do is you go to that page, and it's basically using Amazon like you always do, but it's through, it's got slight, sometimes a slightly different selection, but there is a small bit of the profit is funneled towards the school. It's just another fundraiser. It doesn't increase your cost at all, it just kind of helps keep track and benefits the school by little rewards as Amazon does its magic. Um, another thing, Pickup Patrol is working wonderfully and has taken a huge load off of the office staff. And hopefully, I think it's worked out well for the teachers being able to have at least one, just one place to look instead of a pile of notes every single morning to have to puddle through and figure out. And who has to go where? You can put um, early dismissals on Pickup Patrol as well. Oh. So um, if you're picking up at 2 o'clock or 1.30, you can add that on. Or you, and you can even put your absences on there. And who knows? <laughs> so you can do all of that right on there. And that is perfect. As you can see, one of the things that we're starting to roll out, a lot of parents just have little businesses that they do on the side. Some people sell 31. We have Kathleen selling dots. Some people sell leggings all different th things. If you sell something and you would like to come in, Kathleen offered to come in and do it as a part fundraiser for the school. So 50% of her profits tonight, anything she sells will be donated to home and school and the rest is for herself. So if you sell something, if you have, you know, 
Friend, this is not something you'd like to come in before one of the home and school meetings. We're looking at starting things about half an hour earlier. Just, it's kind of a win-win situation. You know, you can get your name out there, show people your merchandise, and the school benefits a little bit at the same time. And it'll just make for a little more social and cultural event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we'll go from there. Upcoming events. We've got the big 5K coming on March, um, March 4th. The permission slips and all the t-shirt sizes are due by this Friday. So if anybody can get that in. And again, anybody who's doing the 5K, the class that has the most kids participating will receive a pizza party. So trying to encourage kids that way. On March 4th and 5th, the big used book sale is coming up and that's always a biggie for the school. The profits from last year were returned to the teachers to help improve their classroom libraries. Everybody got $50 and we were talking with Jen Giuliani and Marcy Hill about the used book sale coming up and she said they normally, they do all their selling on Saturday and Sunday and then as usual it's open for the kids. On Monday everything's down to a quarter and she said any of the teachers if you want to come through and just any books that you want you can just take them up if you want them in your classroom libraries especially for the younger grades older grades they have such a big range but anything that you want grab an arm load and you can take it right up to your classrooms because that's what it's here for and even on Fridays they're leaving they're gonna start setting up at that point so if you want to swing down on your way out when they have the bigger selection by all means that's what it's there for um, pizza bingo is coming up this next Friday on the 24th we do need the RSVPs back by Tuesday just so we can order all the pizzas ahead of time the next biggie that's coming up as we all know about March 11th the big casino night Mary Kate's in the back to answer any questions and she <laughs> loves questions I have her <laughs> if you want to text her at around 11 30 that is perfect but another event a few questions just an overview um, you can feel free to bring your own food and wine if you like there is free beer will be provided plus two signature cocktails that's included with your admission price brothers is donating food this year so instead of everybody buying big trays keeping them at the tables and just the massive waste, not to mention the massive workload that Brothers has always been wonderful and they're very, very willing to do. They figured this time they will just provide the food for free. So you're hungry, go up to the window, grab something, you can bring it back. There are special, you know, there are the different levels if you're one of the jackpot sponsors. There will be food already at the table for you when you come in. You don't have to worry about going up and getting it yourself. That is there. Um, there will still be the normal silent auction, teacher treasures, the baskets. As far as the games, they're going to have blackjack, craps, roulette, poker, the slot machines. Part of your admission fee also covers you get chips when you come right in the door. So you'll check in. You'll get, I believe, about $200 worth of chips. And then the higher of tiers of sponsorships will have more set aside for them. And then as you play throughout the night, instead of being paid in cash, you're paid in tickets, which you can use on, there will be, I believe, over 30 baskets. And they have some more high-end baskets this year. As opposed, I mean, there will still be the great silent auction things, but in addition, there will be more high-end baskets that you can win for. You can still buy your basket tickets ahead of time, but if you want to get more tickets the night of, you just play to win. And you can always buy more chips at the front table also if you want to keep on donating. Um, as far as what is in the works for us, some of you may have heard one of the big issues that we've had over at TPH is the sound system. And that's always been, you know, a little on the fritz and something that we would love, especially if people were over at one of the Christmas Eve masses and it cut out. We lucked out when we had the talent show, Sarah and her crew brought in a sound system so everybody was able to hear a little bit better. We did have um, what, a company come in and do a very in-depth testing over there of what we were need. We're always gonna be up against a wall because it's not an auditorium, it's a gymnasium. So the acoustics are going to be a little bit off and it's gonna take a bit more than we would like to try to correct some of the issues. So we're in the process of getting three different estimates to see if we could move forward about not just updating, but completely redoing the sound system and TPH. At this point, it's an if. We have to see 
what the results come back in. It is obviously, as we would expect, a very pricey endeavor. It's not gonna be cheap. Because we have been so lucky with Script, the Dining Donates and the various fundraising things, we have an ample reserve right now in the home and school funds. We had talked to Father and he would graciously agreed if we do move forward, a small percentage of casino night can be dedicated to that and then home and school would make up the rest to cover it. And at this point, like I said, we do have enough in reserves to cover that. It would not mean an increased fee. It would not take more fundraising. We would just be using what we have. And as long as we're lucky enough and the profits for casino night worked out the way we had hoped, we will still, about 10% will come to us and we will still have some in reserves to keep on doing the additional little things that as teachers have needs, we would take care of it. So be on the lookout once we get the results in. We want to compare, it's one of those things, as you can imagine, it's easy to get a lower price, but we don't want to sacrifice the quality. We need to make sure that we get something that will last and do what we need it to do. In a perfect world, you know, our goal would always be to try to get it done in time for the eighth grade musical. We'll see how it goes, you know, if we can get through that. Once we find out about what the pricing is gonna be and the breakdown, a survey will go out to the school to see whether you approve the expenditure or not. Any big decision like that, it's home and school funds. It comes down to the Home and School Association to vote if you feel comfortable using those funds. And going down, we'll do a little bit more of a breakdown of the budget at that point, just so you know exactly what it's gonna cost, what it'll bring our reserves down to, and what our plan is moving forward so we can still cover all the bases and su support the school the way we have so far. So the, we have two of the three estimates. The next one should be coming in within the next week or so. They're coming in to take a look. So that's one thing. Another thing we're working on, who loves buying school supplies for the next year? <laughs> I know we hate it. We've been really, really lucky to have the class packs which cover certain folders and binders and everything. One of the things we, have, we are working for is the school kids program, which is through Staples. What we did was they reached, we reached out to them, sent them a sample of our supply list. It's something that we would actually like to update again this year with the teachers to make sure, because I don't think they've been updated mm -hmm. in a few years. You know, do you really need a protractor instead of the wooden rule with the centimeters? Can you need plastic one? <laughs> you know, little things like that, if we can tweak. We did is we sent it to school kids and they'll do something just like Becker's. We would have to pay, the parents would have to go to the website itself and place the order, but they would do, they would basically go, St. Agnes, I have a fifth grader, a third grader, a kindergartner, and then they send us these boxes, which this is really cool for sorting. Every grade has a different color handle. We would have them come in for back to school night, and they would contain all the supplies that are not covered by the class packs. So when it comes to pencils, crayons, and because it is through Staples, it's all brand name stuff. So the pencil cases are nicer fabric pencil cases, good rulers. You have the Crayola crayons, pencil sharpeners, whatever you need. And it would all be here at the school. They also, as a bonus, for any parent that does something, 40 labels with their child's name on it. So they can just slap it on a box of crayons. Everything's labeled. And there's some envelopes in case they have to send money in from home for anything to the school that's also included in their pack. So it's one stop shopping and the prices honestly weren't bad when they sent it us the kindergarten, for example, it would be about twelve dollars per box. For all, so so that's, that's in addition to your class pack. In addition pack. to the class right. pack. So that would have anything you need. Anything else on the list would be there. And up to, I believe it was eighth grade. It was up to, I think, you know, $28 for the higher grades just because there was a, you know, much longer list. They have contact paper on there. We would probably take the contact paper off the list just because a lot of people like to buy the one big roll. And it's, it's either or. You either get the pack with everything in it or you don't get it at all. And it's not a requirement. Mm -hmm. Nobody has to get it. It's just a service that we would offer in case anybody wants to take us up on it and they don't have to worry about it. There will be a strict deadline, you know, just because they serve so many schools that will be, you know, early on in the summer. But I think that once we get it open, 
even if at the tail end of the school year, parents just want to go in and then they don't have to worry about it. It's paid for. They don't have to do any shopping over the summer, and it's done. And it'll be easy for the school to distribute those when the time comes. So that's another. The last thing is volunteer software. Now, does anybody have an altar server over at the church? All right. So you're familiar. You may be familiar with the Rotunda software that the schedules just automatically set out. You get an email. This month you are assigned to do this, this, and this. And if you need a sub, you click a button, it emails just the appropriate people, and then you get a reminder coming out because you usually get also an email saying, hey, there are these openings this week that need to be filled. They have a partner software that's a volunteer software for schools. And that's something that Home and School is looking at. It would be about $65 a month. And one of the difficult things at the beginning is just the logistics of getting everybody's information in. We have volunteers who work behind the counter at lunch. We have volunteers who work in the lunch room, but there are different grades at different times. Some people can only do Mondays, some people can only do Tuesdays. It's a matter of manually and putting everybody's name and saying that if you need a sub, it will only email the other third grade parents looking for a sub instead of emailing every single person who's on their list because you can imagine we have hundreds of volunteer slots every week at the school and we'd like we're going to start out small and see if it works for us starting out with maybe just the lunchroom maybe just copy duty doing a few you know little things like that and then building it up what we would love to do in the long run is have it again just so at the end of the week if you go through and you were supposed to work on tuesday suddenly it's off and you can go under fifth grade and say, ooh, fifth grade needs help in library this week. All right, I'm not working anymore, and put their help in. It would let the teacher know or let Mrs. Egger know that somebody's coming in for library or if it's scholastic reader. Something for the teachers that they could send a note to the office and say, hey, this is what we need this week or you know, over the next month. That would just get emailed to the parents in your class and they could sign up that way to try to make everything a little more streamlined in one place. If you're working lunch just because this is one of the main things and you can't come in. You don't have to worry about going back through your old email list, hoping you get the right emails. You can just push a button and somebody could accept your sub. You'd get a little email saying somebody's covering it for you and then you don't have to worry about it. So it's something that we're looking into at this point. We're gonna keep doing the diamond donates. I really think that's about it. Right now, just a thank you for everybody for reading the communication envelopes. We're still working on, you know, communication. If you hear anyone who has a concern or a question, just make sure they email us. We really haven't been getting a whole lot, which is wonderful from our end, because hopefully that means, you know, there aren't any big concerns. But if you have a question, even if it's not our place to answer it, we can't give you that information, we can make sure we direct the parent to the way it's supposed to, because there's no worse feeling than somebody coming up, yeah, you know, a lot of people are really concerned about this or else we, you know, we don't know, we can't fix it. We can't, you know, there could be already something in place that, you know, was hidden in the communication envelope somewhere that, you know, somebody read through and glanced by quickly when we could quickly clear it up. Um, that's about it. Do you have a couple little things? Just a, a few other little things to let everybody know what's going on. Um, we didn't make a big announcement about this, but there are now 12 new cameras on Gay Street side of the parish. So watch what you're doing. <laughs> um, the bus drivers have expressed some concern about uh, traffic going by too fast out front. So we're working on that. And especially cars parked in front of school at dismissal time, which um, they're supposed to be out of there by one o'clock. Sometimes they're not, so they get tickets, but we're seeing if maybe they can get towed before dismissal time, if that can happen. Um, and also, parents who are parking across the street, picking up their children as walkers, and then, uh, again, walking between the buses, which we all know is not safe. So we are concerned about that. Um, Terranova testing is coming up March 20th, which is still a good month away, um, but you'll be getting information about that. Um, Father Donovan has um, 
you know, as a new pastor comes in, he's allowed to dissolve every board um, that works in the parish. And um, Father gradually has done that, and he um, is reconstituting the endowment board. Marianne is going to be the chairperson of that, um, and we'll send out updates as we get information for that. So Marianne is a preeminent person to head that committee because she was right there at the beginning of the endowment as well. So we're grateful, Marianne, for that. Uh, Father also began um, a new technology committee. Uh, a couple of the dads in the parish, in the school, came to him and asked, you know, what's going on with technology? How can we help? Uh, so Emily and I met with them in December, I guess that was, back yeah, in December. December. And um, we have a new meet, a new committee there. Brian Parsons is the chairperson of that. Mrs. Franny, myself, and father, several parents, two or three parents, and uh, a tech person who's a friend of one of the people. On, so should be another interesting one. Um, as you know, the Pastoral Council has been uh, doing some background work and they did it, surveys in the pews October, I guess. So they're sifting through that information now and they asked me to come to next week's meeting to uh, give some vision of the school. Um, they did give me the survey results for school to look at so that I could maybe address some of those issues as well. So say a prayer for that. And then, um, you know, our clubs continue to do a good thing for the children. And when I came 10 years ago, that was one of the first things that people told me that there had been a big survey about uh, what can we do to make our school better? And the clubs was a big part of that. Uh, so right now, currently we have drama running, Think Like a Scientist and the Art Club. Um, the chess club took a break this semester because it's been running, but not enough kids last time. So they decided to take a break. Monkey Fish will be starting a Little Bits Science Club for the younger children starting at the end of February, early March. And Ryan Hadutsky is going to run a Dots and Dash, Dash and Dot um, Robotics Club for uh, some of the children as well. So um, that's a, a lot of exciting news there. We try to be responsive to the needs of, of the kids, what would be interesting for them. Don't forget Monday is a holiday. Re-Reg went out uh, the beginning of last week. And, um, because it's all electronic this year, we do need to have, uh, if your child is returning to school, back by Friday, so that you're charged the right amount for your re-reg fee, or your student fee, is what we call it. So that went out, and if you have any questions, please just feel free to call the office or let me know by email. And with that, we are happy tonight to welcome a former parent um, and a, a wonderful parent as well, a social worker by trade, um, an active volunteer in many ways. She, um, Elizabeth works with the Clifford's Foundation and our st seventh grade students participate in that with the teddy bear collection. So we have been uh, actively doing that for a good number of years, Elizabeth. So um, Elizabeth wrote a book that uh, she shared with me about a year or so ago, yeah. and I shared it with the home and school. And Elizabeth's uh, topic, which I feel is beautiful, nutrition is to do with <laughs> nutrition um, and how to be eat cleaner, to be better thinking, especially for our kids. So Elizabeth, it's all yours. Thank, Thank you. you. 